Hey ladies and gents, this is Izdawiz here with a look at the Four Horsemen's Figura Obscura, Gods of Ancient Egypt set. Okay, this is a two-figure set. Um, one is Anubis, the jackal-headed Egyptian god, and the other is Bastet, which is a cat-headed uh, Egyptian god. So, um, I've been very excited for this. It just came in yesterday. Um, and now that I've gotten it out of its plastic box, a beautiful plastic prison, um, I am just completely, completely blown away. Um, this is definitely the best figure obscura two-pack set that the Four Horsemen have ever made. Now, I'm going to have to look at this um, figure and compare him to Monkey King because Monkey King is my former favorite um, and just see it going head to head um, which I like better but I can tell you the, this these are two figures tons of you know historically accurate artifacts um, so as a two-pack uh, versus the uh, Sun Wukong King these actually come out victorious um, but, you know, a lot of love was poured into this set. Um, let's start out with the packaging, which is it has um, a magnetic uh, magnets incorporated so that you can pull it out and it serves as a backdrop. You see like the eye of Ra, then some structures, you know, then a, I can't get all of this in the set, but a beautiful work by Nate Barch. He always does a lovely uh, job on these backdrops. I love how the exterior of the packaging can be used as a backdrop to a diorama or to photograph things. It's got a lovely matte finish so it doesn't shine in your photos, but um, this is the best set um, exterior, and then it talks about the mysteries of ancient Egypt and the stet um, but obviously the one that we're looking at is none other than Anubis so let me show you the Anubis packaging when you get it out of its external wrap then you have some more beautiful art there by Nate Barch again the eye of Ra featured prominently and then a pyramid and some sort of mystical magical happenings going on there gods of ancient egypt and anubis with this beautiful um gold shiny uh, writing then on the side we have another egyptian um artifact figure obscura on the side and then we have this li uh, lovely shrine to anubis behind what looks like a, a crystal and pyramid with the golden capstone and then all this mystical power coming down from the moon. So a lot of cool stuff here. Here on the other side, you have another ancient um, Egyptian type artifact. I don't know if uh, there are fantasy elements incorporated, but then on top you have a 4H window and some very cool, sorry, I can't get all this in because there's just too much good stuff, guys. Um, uh, so this figure obscura, you know, they dropped the hint. People were guessing that it was going to be a mummy. I thought that was a little too on the nose, given the fact that Jeremy Gerard and the marketing team uh, whips us into a frenzy, but also likes to throw us curveballs. This is actually a figure that I would put way on top of my most wanted list. Uh, and to hear that not only do we get... Anubis and Bastet, but there will be other Egyptian gods coming along. Um, I don't know if they're going to be part of the figure obscura line or whether they're just it's just going to be like a subline or if they're going to be incorporated into Mythic Legions or how it works. But um, this is awesome. I mean, who doesn't love ancient Egyptian um, artifacts and who isn't fascinated by pyramids and and all of that I have been at, since I was a child and I watched the Ten Commandments. It also comes with this figure obscura god of ancient Egypt booklet. I haven't really had a chance to look at this. Um, but here's the content and the art. And, you know, talking about 
Anubis. So, you know, these are heroes or gods and monsters from, of ancient legend. So um, I'm going to spend a lot of night, uh, time looking through this and marveling at it. But um, that's just a quick look. A lot of content here. Jeremy definitely, I think, uh, earning his keep. Jeremy, Jeremy Gerard as a content writer. So, um, yeah, lovely little storybook there. Glossy. Uh, and then a look at the actual artifacts. Uh, there's going to be a cat that comes with Bastet. And there you go. That's in a little... Uh, bit about Four Horsemen Studios. So you get, you continue that proud tradition of the literary elements of Figura Obscura. This isn't like Jacob Marley. It isn't like the Headless Horseman. It is, um, you know, taken out of uh, actual myth and legend from an actual um, ancient um, culture. And so, but it's cool that we get to learn a little bit about it. I think this set is going to be extremely popular, not only with people who like action figures and mythic legions, but people who are just fans of history and ancient art and Egypt in particular. Um, the figure itself is magnificent. The paint, just how wonderfully he's he's painted and, you know, the detail, all the love that went into this sculpture and every single um, accessory that he comes with, which I should just... Go ahead and start showing you. Comes with the Ankh. So I believe that's a, a symbol of life or eternal life. Very nicely sculpted. He's got a great number of hands. This hand that he comes with just right out of the package is a hand with um, claws on it and, and fingers, which uh, really matches these new um, feet that work for, uh, you know, canine creatures. And I imagine they would work for... Uh, a lion in the future um, as well. But he's got those two clawed hands with these claws that are painted really nicely. In his hand, he's holding this staff. Um, I'm not familiar with it, but it seems like a you know, jackal-headed staff, and it looks like an emblem of power um, in, in ancient Egypt. So I'm going to have to kind of do a deep dive at some point and just enjoy going through the artifacts and learning more about them and what they're inspired by. Um, so here's a, a closer look at this uh, head that uh, Anubis comes with. Now Anubis comes with three heads and I'll show you each of those in turn, but this is the one that he comes with in the package. Uh, and uh, this is his sort of solemn placid uh, or more regal looking face um, there's a a, a uh, oops uh, the tail just popped off there um, oh, give me a chance to show you the tail he's got a bendy tail with wires in it and it's very easy to pop in I imagine it's probably pretty easy for it to pop out as well so what I'll probably do is I'll probably take a little bit of painter's tape and put it on that inside and then it'll give me a little snug fit but I like the fact that the tail is bendy so you can get it into some very cool poses um, and the paint on there is really neat um, and the soft goods I mean I don't even know where to start um, beautiful uh, a thick gauge wire in there on that um, some other things to point out, uh, look at that. That's a very, very cool sort of scaled loincloth and armor under the loincloth, fully painted here. Um, the scarab design, uh, right here in this belt, you can take this off obviously. And, and I think, I believe you can replace it with the other one. Um, but I'm not going to do too much of that mixing and matching here. So yeah, the blue scarab bu bug that really pops and the wings, um, that's really awesome as well. So, um, and then this matching, the new arms that we get, 
right? This tail popped off again. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on there. I, I guess I could possibly just sort of glue it in there. Oh, I get it. I was sticking it in and instead of putting it under the armor piece or the belt piece, I was putting it over. So that's kind of why it was popping off. Um, this looks like a linen kind of cloth. I don't want to futz with that too much, but it's posable. I don't conceive putting him in a Marilyn Monroe uh, pose where he's sitting over a grate and it's flying up. So I think it that'll be um, something that I just leave there exactly the way it is. Um, love the um, airbrushing that goes into uh, these legs. He also comes with some human feet, but I like the gradations in color there. And that sort of matches the gradations in color in his tail as well. Uh, I was mentioning that these are some new arms. Um, it comes with, uh, I believe, detachable uh, bracelets. These are sculpted in, but I think those are uh, can be used in, ups in many different figures and redecoed. I really want to see this, th these arms and these parts put to use uh, to give us some sort of Aztec or Me Mesoamerican figure. Um, that is my greatest uh, wish. Um, and I just see those arms, especially those legs and the, the bare feet and the new body uh, poses uh, or, or pieces going really well with that. Look at all the intricacy in the sculpt here in the torso and then here in the detachable collar piece. And um, the cool thing about the paint is this actually looks like a real turquoise stone. So they were able to approximate that. And there's a hint here where it actually, you know, the stone looks like stone, you know, the wood looks like wood, the metal looks like metal. So it looks like it's, it, it's real. Um, I only, I see a tiny hint of uh, paint on the on the gold piece here and that's very rare to see a little stray hit just because their paint is so perfect in every respect usually so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just take a, a gold sharpie and paint that one line paint over that one line because it looks like there was just a tiniest little bit of overspray there and that is not really it's notable only because it's so rare and because everything is so neat and clean and perfect in every respect on this figure. All of the lines are, are, are done perfectly. So when you see a tiniest bit of overspray on a piece, it's like, wow. I mean, these are made by actual humans, but they are and have for a long time been as close to perfection as anybody could humanly get with um, action figures. So. Like I said, this is a two-piece set, but there's so many accessories and stuff that come with it that I'm going to have to do uh, two separate reviews because it's just too much, even though it's a two-piece set, and they both have to be purchased together. There's this shrine to Anubis. It's got the jackal kind of perched on top, and you can open it. Um, it's empty. There's, there's no real surprise there, but um, it looks like gilded wood. It definitely, you know, the sculpt looks like wood. And I'm sure Eric just really studied the real actual artifacts in the, in the shrine uh, to Anubis. And there you can see um, it's got some pegs that clip in there. So you can take it on or you can put it off. Um, but very regal looking. Really awesome. And uh, that's obviously the big piece. I could see incorporating that into an Indiana Jones display or just, I don't know. I mean, it, it looks really, really classy in a collection when you have like <laughs> Pete Diorama pieces like that, right? So um, here's the other head of Anubis. And this is the um, calm, but sort of stylized jackal head so it looks like it was carved out of stone and it's got a little bit of cracking on it so it's a sort of like a stone god come to life right so there's that magical element and it's just beautifully done uh, and it's got a plug in there so you pull that head in and then you plug this in 
and you have that alternate look if that's what the look that you want to go to or you know you could buy three and get all three heads their own individual body then you have the um, other um, more realistic sort of ferocious head where it's growling I, I love this one as well uh, it's like a battle uh, Anubis I suppose uh, with his snout wrinkled his fangs bared look at the paint on that tongue where it looks like it's moist and glistening right again all the everything is perfectly done these little uh, gold pieces um, the eyes just tiny turquoise gleam in there as well and just beautiful beautiful work of art again uh, you can easily swap the head out and stick it in there as well for that alternate look. I think that ferocious, like angry one is going to be particularly popular. Um, Got to get go quick here. So we come with two extra human feet in case you don't want the the uh, either um, canine or or could be feline feet down there. I think I like that because it's more godlike than human. Uh, you have a canopic jar with the head of look at that look at that it's a canopic jar and it's got the head of anubis on it and then i uh, i pull it open and i half expect to see the desiccated remains of some internal organ in there but no um and then these really sculpted in sort of uh hieroglyphics there beautiful i mean it's just like something that you would see in a museum actually oh and then this there's a little stand here. I think I may have put this. I uh, did I put that on backwards? I'm not sure, but it's a it's an artifact. Looks like the eye of Ra there. That may be upside down. Let me put that. But anyway, it's kind of cool that you get a little stand and you can sort of incorporate that into your display. Very very cool. Uh, uh, again, it comes with a separate neck, so you can use that. Um, if you decide to 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 go that route with this with the separate neck, um, it also has uh, just not just the ball, but it's got the back and forth hinge on that. Um, and I I've already seen tons of pop and swaps here, so that gives you the option to have a different neck on the figure. So it's it's a brown a brownish more human neck instead of a black colored uh, you know Anubis her furry neck. And last but not least, we've got all these hands, right? So how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all sort of grasping hand that you might conceivably need, both with the human hand and sort of the monstery clawed uh, hands as well. So I think that hands like these, especially these dramatic gesturing hands, really add a lot of drama and coolness to a set so like every hand you'll ever need uh is there and awesomely included so let's go through what it comes with again it comes with all these extra hands right i counted and i told you how many are in there and then it comes with the two loose grasping hands that are already on the figure obviously it comes with the three heads um, the base body, two sets of feet, It's that's the human and the canine feet, comes with a canopic jar um, with the head of Anubis on it, comes with this little stand and then the eye of Ra that might be upside down. I got to figure out how to, how to work that. Um, it comes with the extra neck. It comes with this awesome shrine to Anubis. So all this in this package that also includes this um, figure obscura gods of ancient Egypt book with all of Nate Barch's illu uh, uh, art illustrating it comes with a package that you can pull the um, the uh, front off and incorporate into a diorama so this is an awesome set the best figura obscura I think bar none especially since we got two I and mean, this is an abundance of riches a home run I've been waiting for a long time for this um, I had my early Anubis uh, set from Scarabus but I modified him and, I, and because I, I wanted a different look for Anubis. But this is the perfect Anubis now. So, uh, yeah. And uh, here are, here, here, here's a custom 
that I made of uh, Pharaoh using the Four Horsemen's uh, superpowers um, figure of Pharaoh. So you can tell how much I love these Egypt Egyptian figures that the Four Horsemen made and how long I've been waiting for the coming of Anubis. And Bastet, I did not expect, but it was an awesome surprise. And I can't wait to review that second set of this two-pack of Figura Obscura for you. Is to Wiz, signing out.